Gaming is just the best. And if you're playing first person, multiplayer, or just going back through that old classic to find uh, missing skulls you never found, I've got a few different things you might want to think about adding to your setup. Gaming as a whole is an awesome spectacle that we've created to keep ourselves busy on well, our precious downtime. And as we've gotten more advanced, knowing that first person shooters, campaigns, multiplayers, Fortnite, Battleground, Starcraft, all of these different genres of computer games and starting off from old simple games like Minesweeper, all the way up to anything that Unreal's throwing out today. There have been little things along the way that we've grabbed that we've held on to, like the mouse and keyboard. It's kind of been around the entire time. So that brings us to our first topic of unknown gaming accessories that you might need to get. So our first topic of unknown gaming accessories that you might have not thought of to upgrade your setup is human interfaces devices. Now, if you don't know what that is, you may have already used one of these, like your mouse and keyboard that have been around since the beginning of computers. Those are human interface devices, generally used now as HID click, USB click, devices. Click, click, These are anything click, from click, controllers, click, keyboards, click, pretty much anything click, click, that you plug into your computer click, that's click, your inputting keyboard. something to. The reason why I bring this up as unknown accessory that you might need is because these devices do get very specific for games. And what I mean by that is maybe you're a racing game, you've been playing with a mouse and keyboard. Why are you doing that? You should be using Ooh, pedals fancy. and a shifter and possibly even a steering wheel. There's all these different devices out there that go with different types of genres of games that a lot of people don't get or don't really know about. So the first topic is HID devices to go with your games. So humans to the games, making it just a little bit closer. So I've already brought up one example. There's also other things like Bluetooth controllers, Bluetooth keyboards, racing wheels, pilot controls, many different other types of controllers to make you feel more like you're actually in the game. So if you really want to feel like you're driving that starship, maybe you want to get a throttle control and map it to the game so that it feels like you're, you know, taking off on your spaceship versus, uh, you know, mashing the W key. And that's basically what this whole topic is about. The idea is to take the games that you like and maybe have been playing with a mouse and keyboard and try and get more, you know, feel out of it. That first person shooter that's pretty slow and doesn't really need knee jerk reactions, well maybe a controller would be better for that type of game. Maybe it's an L.A. Noir type of game and uh, all you're doing is, you know, holding things up and slowly looking at them. Well, I would use one a controller for that one. Maybe another game like Ali Ali World. You definitely want a controller for that one because doing flips and kick flips and skateboard things, you're definitely gonna want a controller for that. But a controller is not nearly as good as say a racing wheel for a racing game. So there's a lot of different types of controllers and human input devices that you may not have really thought of for a game that you're just getting into. So that's why I picked it as this topic to bring awareness to different accessories. If you'd like to see a more in-depth video about all these different types of devices, let me know in the comments down below because this is just a roundup to get everybody thinking about computer gaming and what else it might be missing. Let's move on to our next topic, which is also a weird one. The next topic on our list is something a little bit odd, but definitely will take your gaming to the next level, which is fuel. And no, no, oh no, no, I'm not talking about gamer fuel. Well, kind of. I am kind of talking about gamer fuel. I'm talking about food and beverages and where you're gonna be putting them on your desk or in your setup and what to be using as fuel. So first off, if you want a clean machine, a clean, ruthless machine, the fuel going in's gotta be good. So coffee and definitely snacks. This is definitely an unknown accessory to gaming because I could definitely tell you, and I have a little bit of caffeine and not too much to eat, I could definitely tell you I'm snappier on the shop. Not very snappy to begin with, but snappier nonetheless, which is why I'm making this topic of unknown gaming accessories and specifically what you're putting in to get them high FPS shots. I recommend pretty much two things for caffeination, coffee and tea. If you don't like hot coffee, but like the taste of coffee, cold brew, cold brew. I'd recommend cold brew because it doesn't have the acid and doesn't make your stomach hurt. If you don't like coffee altogether, tea's also a good option, but make it a black tea. So you get a little bit of a zip and not too much of that other stuff. As for food wise, everybody's got their preference on food. So just don't eat a crazy amount of it. And then you'll be nice and zippy off that uh, big cup of cold brew. This also leaves us an idea of if you're PC gaming, 
or gaming at a desk, you definitely need water to lubricate the machine, which is definitely another accessory. And you're gonna need somewhere to put your plates because if you're not done a match, you're gonna have, a have to have a little space to place your plate down. So leaving ample space for coasters and a spot you can put dishes before you're done a match is definitely an option, which is why I think most people have these big desks because you're not gonna normally have it filled with anything, but on the daily it gets used for other things like placing a sandwich, eating a sandwich, drinking too much coffee, and then editing YouTube videos all night. I definitely haven't done that. Other than that, this is kind of a simple one. Basically, you don't eat too much, eat the right amount, definitely caffeinate, and have a spot to put all of your beverage so you don't ruin your fancy desk, if you got a desk. Other than that, I think we should move on to our last topic of unknown gaming accessories that I really do think will uh, up the value of your gaming experience, or get you mad kills. Alrighty, the last thing that I really think that is underlooked and is pretty much an unknown gaming accessory even though we see it all the time, is, uh, swag. 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 Yes, that dreaded word of swag. It's ugly things that people are peddling to try and get you to get all of your money, and nobody, nobody wants to buy any of it, and it's all terrible, and everybody's... No, I don't think it's that terrible. I think it's got a place, but I also think you shouldn't overload on it. So the real thing here is we now pretty much buy our games all digitally. Not sure who's still buying things from GameStop, but it's sure not me. But this has left me with uh, a little bit of a void. Hold on. If you pre-ordered it, they'd sometimes give you like a first run edition. Comes with uh, like a little figurine or something. But games don't come in boxes anymore. So including a little figurine in the box, well, You'd have to ship it to them and it'd add extra cost and it'd then be, at that point, a special edition. So the reason why I say swag is because maybe you've put two or three hundred hours into a game you really enjoy and you've got pretty much nothing physical to show for it other than maybe your character in the game. So investing in maybe a franchise or a game that you really enjoy, like... You look behind me, I have the cyberpunk picture. I still have my Pokemon Gold remake box and the little figurine that came with it. I'm also even just a little bit embarrassed to tell you how many times I've bought Final Fantasy X and X2. It's definitely more than twice. But as gamers, we've been playing these games for years and having something physical that I can look back on and equate to uh, time spent and uh, memories created, I think is something good that actually does bring you an extra little bit of maybe in Destiny you you finished the raid day one and uh, you got some sort of stupid pin. That's something you could look back on and have a little bit of a memory to instead of, well, you got nothing. It's just all in a hard drive somewhere. So swag is definitely a uh, hot topic, but also one I can see being an unknown accessory to, you know, raise your confidence when uh, maybe you're gaming and you're down on your luck and need to reminisce about, damn, I was good but not so good anymore. So these gaming accessories are great and all, and I think the three topics of fuel going in, swag you need to raise your spirits, and human interface devices are a pretty good broad spectrum of topics that I don't think really are talked about that much. They might be talked about in little snippets here and there as individual videos, but this is kind of a more general topic. So comment down below on what you think the most interesting thing from these topics would be about, which is right here and here. More videos about the Steam Deck or more videos about gaming in general. And technology, these videos will never end because technology never slows down. So take a look at these two, might spark your interest. Thank you.